USA Golf and Travel with Mark Stewart and Rebecca Blackwell, your hosts for the show. Welcome to USA Golf and Travel. This special edition is unlike any program we've ever done. Here we trace the highlights of the life of Martin Luther by traveling the new routes to Luther Tour in Germany. We visit Eiselbem, birthplace of Martin Luther, November 10, 1483. Next, a full tour of Erfurt to see the monastery where Luther studied, beginning in 1505. You'll see the Wartburg Castle in Eisenach, where Martin Luther hid for a short while, and the most influential city in Germany in the life of Luther, Wittenberg, where Luther posted his 95 theses and built his Luther Hall. Join us now in this half hour that you won't forget. A journey through Germany in the footsteps of the great reformer Martin Luther. We've just landed in Dusseldorf, Germany to begin our special show on Martin Luther's Germany. Dusseldorf is one of Europe's little jewels. It is a city that is known for its designer shopping with French, Italian, American names. Koenig's Alley is the famous upscale luxury street that visitors flock to. In fact, all the tourists and locals are out today, shopping and enjoying dining in outdoor street cafes. Here are some of the designer names along this expensive street of real estate. The old city with its cobblestone streets is also a lot of fun and always busy. Mark's enjoying people watching on this very sunny day. The Rhine River plays a big role in Dusseldorf's activities. And right beside the Rhine River, only about 10 minutes from the airport, is the Radisson SAS Hotel. This is where we begin our travel story for you. We know that many of you would like to find an intimate boutique hotel with the flavor of the city it's located in. Take a look at the quality and comfort of your first impression in the lobby of the Radisson SAS Hotel. At the lobby cafe, there's always a snack waiting for you. Dusseldorf is a major business center, and the Radisson caters to conferences every day. The lobby hallways lead us past a gallery of items, jewels and fashion, all showcased in exquisite wood-paneled window displays. And no need to worry about a hairdresser. The hotel has its own coiffure. What a warm and rich ambiance the wood panel lends to the lobby. Views from the guest rooms picture the Rhine River and the Rhine Tower, inviting you to experience a boat ride on the Rhine. We're totally amazed when we see the rooms, not what we expect to see in a Radisson. But this Radisson is part of Radisson's new designer hotels with themed rooms. For instance, the room you see now is a high tech in theme and is one of a kind. No other room anywhere in the world looks like this. And then here's a maritime theme. Other themes are Scandinavian, Oriental, and Italian. It's a lot of fun. Not all of the hotel is themed. You can book a reservation in a more standard setting. But even when you do, you will soon see that you have really got an office with fast speed internet modem, direct dial, satellite TV, the works. When it comes to cuisine, you'll be dining in Le Jardin. Appropriately named as it reveals the Radisson's beautiful outdoor garden as a backdrop throughout. If you've ever traveled to Germany before, you know breakfast is always elaborate. You'll always find an assortment of cheeses, cold cuts, and hard-boiled eggs. But the Radisson gives you personalized service and cooks it to order, too. Here is our table, and as you can see, it has a great view to the garden. Just to show you the personality of this boutique hotel, here is the covered walkway which leads to the carefully manicured private garden just steps from Le Jardin. It's perfect for sunning during the day or even outdoor barbecues. Even if you don't have time to join the pool club, you can certainly enjoy it. Serenity and peace is how you'll feel at the Radisson's indoor pool. 
It has a jacuzzi, sauna, solarium, and treatment rooms for massage. A good workout is also available in the gym. You'll be glad you stayed at the Dusseldorf Radisson SAS, and you'll be glad you stopped in Dusseldorf. My name is Mike DeHaast, General Manager of the Radisson SAS Hotel in Dusseldorf. At the Radisson SAS Dusseldorf, we have an attitude of yes I can, where we say nothing is too much for our customer, and if we cannot satisfy you, then we give your money back. 100% guest satisfaction guaranteed ensures that next time you come to Dusseldorf, you'll stay in the Radisson SAS. On your trip to Dusseldorf, be sure not to miss one of the world's best variety theaters, the Apollo. Here's a sampling of what we saw. I'm singing, just singing in the rain. The Apollo is great fun. Don't miss it. Stay with us now as we visit Erfurt, a city with a lot of Martin Luther history. Martin Luther spent important days in the city of Erfurt, and this is where we begin today by meeting our guide. Hans-Peter R., tour guide here in Erfurt, and uh, Hans-Peter uh, Martin Luther has a big part of his history right here in this town. Martin Luther came here uh, 1501 to study in this town, but not to become a priest. At first he wanted to become a lawyer. In Erfurt there was a very famous university in this time. This university was founded 1392 and was the only university in the middle of Europe and therefore Martin Luther came here to this town. And so 1506 he entered the Augustinian monastery here on this town and in that Augustinian monastery he stayed until 1511. After that he went to Wittenberg. In the Middle Ages, Erfurt was one of the richest of the most wealthy towns in the middle of Europe and uh, there were uh, about 15 until 20,000 inhabitants, but 80 churches and a lot of them you can see until today. Now walk with us through one of the oldest bridges in the world that people have continuously inhabited. As you can see, the morning is just beginning and the shop owners are just getting ready for the day's business here on the bridge. It's amazing that these interiors have endured for all these years, but possibly it's the extra thick walls that have helped. Hans shows us and tells us about the ceilings. And here this ceiling is from about 1580. It's origin painted, origin ceiling, more than 400 years old. Right now we're looking at a set of steps that lead onto the bridge. And these steps are known be as Luther steps because Martin Luther used the same passageway when he be first became a monk to uh, beg for money, which was a tradition for the novice monks to, uh, for the humility to beg and so these steps are where he was known right outside of this bridge this is where he did that I'm standing by the river once again in a very serene setting this would be equivalent the building we're looking to at the right would be equivalent to what we would call a dorm this is where Martin Luther would have stayed and probably did it was dates back to 1500s and uh, basically this building here is partially leaning into the water there it was planned and designed that way they had a tax structure at the time that uh, any part of the building that was on the land was taxed and the portion that was out over the water was free. Well it looks very picturesque to me, does it to you? It's a really just a common house but uh, it's part timber and part stucco and it, it is very very typical of the time of Martin Luther and still standing here so that we can enjoy it today. You can see now that we've crossed the street here and we're at the River Gala and this is just a beautiful romantic spot here in Erfurt for evenings, for sitting out on the terraces and the patios with the flowers surrounding you and the river flowing by. It's a romantic, wonderful little place to have a dinner. We're on the grounds of the monastery where Martin Luther was from 1505 to 1511. Right now we're going to head on over to the church. <laughs> Martin Luther became a famous man 
and the people said that you need a symbol and this symbol became the white rose and we're going to do a close up on it now the white rose now we're in the monastery, we're upstairs on the floor where the cells were, the private rooms for meditation and praising the Lord. Martin Luther had one that was particularly his or assigned to him and we're standing in front of it right now. And if you can look in with me, you'll see that there wasn't much room in the cell, but they all had little windows. This is where Martin Luther would have done his meditation, praying and praising the Lord. We leave the monastery now for more of our tour of Martin Luther. This concludes our guided tour of Erfurt with Hans in the lobby of the Radisson SAS Hotel, the hotel we found most central and comfortable for any Luther tour in Erfurt. Hello, dear ladies and gentlemen in the United States. Um, my name is Mario Schuknecht. I'm the sales manager here of the Radisson SAS Hotel in Erfurt. And I would like to welcome you at this beautiful hotel. It's 316 um, comfortable uh, furnished rooms. Most of them are overlooking the medieval city. We're having right here the breakfast. And uh, it's something special here because the policy of Radisson SIS is just to offer the best breakfast in the city. We have a beautiful view to the uh, medieval city of Erfurt. As you have seen, Erfurt is not only one of the world's most charming intact medieval towns, but it is a must in tracing Martin Luther's life. And now we move on to Wittenberg, another must on the Germany Luther route. We are in Wittenberg. I'm standing in front of the very famous door that really started the whole historical event and change of the Reformation when Martin Luther took his thesis and nailed it to the door. The same door that was there at that time is not here now. It, it suffered a fire in 1760. But in the meantime, we have a new door here, but this is the location, and this is the church, the famous church that he did it in. On our next stop here in Wittenberg, we're standing now before the St. Mary's Church. St. Mary's Church is important because Martin Luther gave one of his sermons, or many sermons, in German for the first time speaking in German to the local folks that lived here in Wittenberg at the time. This church is really intact, very uh, much the way it was when Martin Luther was here, and uh, people today, to this day, are still worshiping in this church. If you were to go inside, one of the treasures of Wittenberg and one of the great pieces of art that's still remaining and, and in original colors is the uh, chronic altar piece that they have in this church in which he painted uh, depictions of Martin Luther doing his baptism, having a, a round table, sit down dinner, uh, celebration of the mass, you might say. So uh, this was, uh, this is a very important church and on the stop in Wittenberg, it's uh, it, for the art and, and the fact that the church is still standing here as it was. It's really worthy of a stop. We've arrived here at the Luther House at the end of the street here in Wittenberg, and we're standing in front of uh, his wife's Katerina, his, her statue, and uh, Dieter, there's a story behind uh, the marriage. Yes. Of course. She was a former nun, a sister of the Jensen nun. Luther was an Augustinian monk, and it was not so really common to have a wedding together. But um, Luther worked out in, his, in the 20s. Uh, there is no place in the script where monks or nuns are mentioned, but the family life is okay. Um, but uh, in reality, she decided, I will take Martin Luther. This happened in 1525. Luther named her in his letters in German, Mein Herr Käthe, my master Katie. It's great to take a little break while you're touring, and uh, we've done that, haven't we, Dieter? Uh, we're having our cappuccino here and sitting right in Wittenberg at a charming little outdoor spot. And we have everything here. Uh, Wittenberg was not really damaged during the Second World War. We have the original sites, churches, museums, and uh, I think people can have the feeling of Reformation time here, really. Mm -hmm. In our next story, we visit the town of Eisenach for one very important reason. This is the site of the World Heritage Wartburg Castle. 
Tourists know about it and flock to this medieval castle yearly in search of history and Martin Luther's footsteps. The Wartburg Castle played a big part in Martin Luther's life. It was during the Diet of Worms when Martin Luther refused to recant his theses, so the Pope of the Catholic Church excommunicated him and the Emperor hunted for him. But Martin Luther disguised himself and stayed in the castle from 1521 to 1522. And actually, during this time, Martin Luther translated the Bible into German. As a young man, Martin Luther spent quite a bit of time studying in Eisenach, so he was very familiar with the Wartburg Castle long before his undercover there. As you walk through the castle, you can just imagine what it must have been like during those times. And here is Martin Luther's room, which sheltered him so well while he worked on his own writings and translated the Bible. This concludes our tour of Martin Luther in Germany. The life of Martin Luther, 1483 to 1546, changed the world, and you will thoroughly enjoy touring the Luther route in Germany. We have just scratched the surface on this show. Plan a trip with this purpose and you will see so much more. Driving in our Avis van was absolutely the best way to follow Luther's footsteps in Germany. And Avis is where you need it, at the airport, from start to finish. Mark and I arrive now in the city of Munich, a great city for walking. You'll discover landmark squares and landmark buildings around every corner. The Odeon Square is one of our first stops, and we were told it was restored in 1806. You'll notice so much influence from the Greek architecture, with columns and grand pillars and then the Romans influence with statues throughout the city. Sometimes you have to look up to notice the details at the top of the buildings. Mark had something on his mind which also influences life in Munich and that is the beer gardens. You really should plan stops on your walk at all the famous beer gardens. You can see we did <laughs> If it looks like we're having just a little bit too much fun, well, we are. And that's what you're supposed to do at this very popular tourist site, the Hofbrauhaus. <laughs> Munich will surprise you with all its history. And of course, much of the history revolves around churches and cathedrals. We entered St. Michael's Church with endless ornate stucco adornment and novelty decor. And it rises to a huge vaulted ceiling spanning its crest. Actually, it was the first large-scale church to be built in Germany since the Reformation. I thought it was one of the most beautiful churches I've ever seen, and it was really hard to leave. Off through the distance are the towers of just another cathedral. The Germans love to take in the sun, and we were in Munich on a sunny day, great for strolling in the park. Munich's parks babble with the music of many fountains. And the winter months are bearable when you know you can spread out on the green grounds, so well manicured. And everyone can hear individuals who have a lot of talent for an affordable price. Just the time to watch and listen. Here's something interesting. The horse standing in front of this museum has both of his feet on the ground. And that means he's never been killed or wounded. And now as we see more of Munich, we chose country inns and suites as our residence while in Munich. My name is Thomas Thompson. I'm the general manager of the Country Inn and Suites in Munich, Bavaria, and I'd like to welcome you and Rebecca. And welcome us he did. The Country Inn is located just outside the city center. It's away from the masses and has a park-like feel. Even the check-in is easy and casual in a living room setting. And if you want to enjoy dining in the country, you'll love being here. We found the country setting calming and cheery. And breakfast in the morning is a big production with an array of just about everything from eggs to bacon to well, you name it. 
and of course, baskets of bread. The walls are lined with knickknacks throughout that convey a homey, warm feeling, a country feeling. The outdoor country terrace is blooming in flowers and aroma, with a bench or two inviting you to rest and smell the roses. Thomas Thompson shows us the rich, yummy butter cookies that the Country Inn is known for. But we sat down for coffee and cookies to talk about the sights nearby and what not to miss. And then Mark and I set off to explore more of Munich, through the arches and into the old center. The people of Munich are really enjoying this beautiful sunny day, walking, looking and shopping. There are many Bavarian mugs and souvenirs to look at. Mark and I had fun in the Museum of Fish and Wildlife with its own German bear. And then we arrived at the Marienplatz, the new town hall with its mechanical clock tower. A great place to have a meal and a view. One city I love to visit on any trip to Europe is Amsterdam. There just isn't anything like it. You can see we drove our Avis car in, but this is a walking city, so we parked the car and checked into our easy-to-remember named hotel, Hotel Amsterdam, right in the center of everything. Well, I couldn't wait to glide through the canals again. Key Tours specializes in tours in and out of the city, and lucky for us, it was just a few blocks away. First you take a bus, and then you board your floating tourist boat for about a one and a half hours of winding around the city with a full explanation of all the buildings, their age, and even who lived in them. Very historical. Here we go, winding through the canals and floating under the lineup of bridges. And to the right, we're approaching the famous landmark, the Anne Frank House. The canals are clean, but the streets are very narrow, all tree-lined. People live in their own homes on the canals, ranging from deluxe to tugboat. But then you will see just about all the key landmarks along this tour, and even little old houses leaning but standing. The canal trip is my favorite and always beautiful. You're welcome in Amsterdam for your holidays. Amsterdam is not just a city for walking. It is definitely a city for riding bikes. Now we meet René Wildeman, General Manager, Hotel Amsterdam. Welcome to Amsterdam and of course welcome to Hotel Amsterdam, the Red Line. Amsterdam is a very historical city. It dates back centuries and uh, I think it's worth visiting. It's a good start to start your uh, trip through Europe. Amsterdam was created around the dam in uh, the Amstel River and the Amstel River was just in front of the hotel here. This hotel is in the hands of the same families, two families since uh, 90 years. It's a first-class hotel for the hotel, the Dutch hotel ranking. We have 80 rooms and we have this famous restaurant behind me which is the, the Red Line restaurant which specializes in Dutch uh, regional cuisine. Just some steps from here in front of you you, will see, you see Dam Square so Dam Square, as I said before, was a dam in the Amstel River and next to Anne Frank House. So you're right in the center, of course, not far from here, you have all the canal boats uh, for the cruises. I mean, you cannot visit Amsterdam without making a cruise through the canals. And it takes about one hour and a half. Come to Amsterdam, as we said before, it's a very historical city. The whole center is protected, it's a protected area and most buildings date back to the 17th century when Holland was very rich and we had the biggest fleet in the world. Hartelijk welkom in Amsterdam and in Nederlands. USA Golf and Travel is in Paris, France, right in front of the Opera, a central landmark in Paris, and not far from another famous monument, the Place de Vendôme. This neighborhood is also home to all the familiar, elegant fashion and jewelry houses, which flank our deluxe boutique hotel, part of the Warwick International Group, the Hotel Westminster, as charmingly Parisian as you could ever imagine, and with a long history, located on one of the most prestigious streets in Paris, an oasis of fashion. You'll love the antiquities, crystal, marble, and brocade that are so warming, a jewel of a hotel in the best location in Paris. Welcome to the Hotel Westminster. Let me present myself. I'm Volker Sachter, general manager of this lovely property. 
Now, you uh, want to know maybe uh, where this uh, property is located. It's right in the middle of Paris. It's close between the Opera and the Place Vendôme. Next to Rivoli, we have uh, the Tuileries Gardens, we have uh, the Louvre, we have just everything one can, you could wish. And what we most like is that we love the Americans and especially those from the West Coast. So uh, this hotel has, is, has a history of 150 years and we have done a lot of refurbishments to please our American clients. And uh, the last one which is coming up is the fitness center, should be ready in uh, mid of uh, August. So uh, I really would like to see you all and uh, just take your time and come over to Paris. And now we find ourselves on a spiral staircase throughout the hotel leading to one of the suites we'll be enjoying while we're here. Each suite is individually decorated in pastel palettes and accentuated with luxuriously refined settings. And as you can see, I feel right at home. Our suite had a marble fireplace and all the amenities, direct dial, voicemail, CNN, and whatever movies we wanted, a mini bar, and of course, fluffy pillows. The bathroom is done in earth tone marble with French designer soaps and bath products. And for your ultimate comfort, a thick warm robe and heated towel racks, double vanity basins, a deep tub, shaving mirror, and every night our bed was beautifully turned down just for us. Now if you want Michelin starred room service, or you want to dine in one of Paris's best restaurants, Le Celadon, located in Hotel Westminster, how soothing and intimate it is to be in one of Le Celadon's small dining salons each separated by graceful archways. Shades of celadon green and accents are on the pottery, and the table is set in crystal and silk, with an extensive wine list and even cozy couches to really relax. This restaurant has been entirely renovated by Pierre-Yves Rochon, who is also recognized for his work at George Sank. It's time for refreshment. And no one visits the Hotel Westminster without stopping at Le Chenet, the hotel's piano bar, with dark green walls, candelabras, covered ceiling, and deep leather chairs. On the piano, wonderful classic favorites. This is a meeting place for those who know. Hotel Westminster will pamper you and delight you in luxury that you will expect in Paris. Well, we're leaving Paris now, but first, we want to thank Avis Renicar for providing a roomy van for all of us on our trip through Europe. And when you think of Europe, think of Avis. We found that they really do try harder. And you can find the location you want at www.avis.com. One last look at Paris, Place Vendôme, Rivoli, Champs-Élysées, the Eiffel Tower, and the road along the Seine River. Until next year, adieu. We want to thank Radisson SAS Hotel Erfurt and Avis Renicar and Hans and Dieter, our guides. Join us next week for more of Europe. And until the next time, goodbye from USA Golf and Travel. Thank you, LTU, for being our airline on this special show. Your founder's motto is, flying is for everyone, and you should know because you fly more than 5.7 million people every year. In fact, you are the largest German holiday airline. LTU flies non-stop flights from Los Angeles to Munich and Dusseldorf. First Comfort Class is a treat for business travelers, and why shouldn't it be you? LTU will pamper you and give you wider leather seats to sink into. So call 866-266-5588 or go to www.ltu.com and book your Martin Luther Germany trip today. USA, golf and travel, going where you want to go, learning Meeting people along the way you want to know. USA, golf and travel, meet old friends and new ideas from north to south.
south from sea to shining sea. 